out in the North Atlantic all the year round are nine small ships, each one stationed in a given area. They are weather ships, ocean stations set up in 1947 to provide weather reports, navigational aids and rescue services for transatlantic flying. The ships are supplied by America, Norway and Sweden, France, Holland and Britain. The crews of Britain's four weather ships get about 15 days in harbour at Greenock on the Clyde between each voyage. Then it's back to sea again for 30 days, with 24 days actually spent on station. The 250-foot ships are converted naval frigates of about 1,300 tonnes, which ride out the worst Atlantic gales in their work of supplying continuous weather reports. As one of them puts to sea, her crew of 57 men settle down to a routine of four hours on duty and eight hours off. The weather advisor is going to station I for India 300 miles south of Iceland. These stations get their names from the International Aviation Phonetic Alphabet. The voyage out will take about three days. This station is kept by Britain, Holland and France and weather advisor will take over for a month from a Dutch weather ship. When she gets to her position, engines are stopped and the ship just drifts. It's far too deep to anchor, of course. Now the seven weathermen on board really get down to work. Air temperature readings are taken every hour. Twice a day, deep sea temperatures are taken, which means launching the bathythermograph. This instrument is used for recording sea temperatures at depths of 450 feet and 900 feet. Twice a week, Deep sea soundings are made to record the amount of salt in the water and this information is passed on to the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food. While the recording work goes on, the ship has probably drifted a little off its station, which is 10 miles square. So her engines are run slow ahead and she moves back into position again. When it's blowing really hard, a weather ship keeps stationed by steaming slowly ahead into the wind all the time. For the 41 men who run the ship, routine maintenance goes on while at sea, and the galley has to cater for appetites sharpened by the weather. For the cooks aboard these small ships, especially in midwinter, a cast iron stomach is essential. Eight hours off duty for the crew means sleep, food, and leisure in the limited space available. Captain Harry Sobey, master of the weather advisor, has seven officers who run the ship. Radio equipment is vital and five operators and four technicians keep round-the-clock watches. As well as collecting surface and underwater data, the weathermen, every six hours, take observations from the upper air. For these, a balloon is filled with hydrogen on the upper deck. A tricky job in bad weather. The balloon carries a radio sound an instrument which measures the pressure, temperature and humidity of the air as the balloon ascends. These observations are automatically transmitted back to the ship by radio. In the Met Room, the radio sound is thoroughly checked. Its performance is tested. It's not retrieved after it's been sent up, so every effort is made to get results on the first attempt. 
Attached to the balloon is a radar reflector. The ship's radar can then track the balloon and record the wind speed and direction. When all is ready, the radio sonde is attached below the reflector. And the balloon's away. Depending on the strength of the wind, the balloon may rise fast or be swept away at a low angle. But the radar screen shows its height, and the observations come in automatically by radio every minute. Passed down to the Met Room, this information is fed into an electronic device similar to a computer, which produces continuous observations up to about 16 miles. At that height, the balloon usually bursts. The weather ships send out all their observations on regular broadcasts, so that Europe and America and as far away as Japan can receive the information directly, to be used for transatlantic flight planning, shipping forecasts and local weather forecasting. These weather ships also form an important part of the air-sea rescue organization of the North Atlantic. A ship or aircraft in trouble in the area becomes priority number one. So rescue practice with rubber boats and immersion suits to pick up survivors is routine. The weather ship may be the only radio link between rescuers and those to be rescued. And if near enough, she'll steam to the sea. The crew of a weather ship must be ready to put off in the lifeboats at any time of day or night and in any weather. Aircraft passing through the area keep in touch with the weather ship, both for navigational aids and weather reports. One weather ship may guide as many as 50 aircraft through its area in a day. RAF planes of Coastal Command make regular training flights to British weather ships to practice ditching exercises, so keeping air crews and weather ship men on their toes for the real thing. RAF planes come out from Britain, so why not bring something for the boys too? With 30 days at sea, what could be more appreciated than mail and magazines? Tough, arduous, routine work. That's life on a weather ship. But it's essential for the safety of the hundreds of thousands of people who cross the Atlantic every year by sea and air. And for the millions who want to know when that next depression off Iceland is coming along. <laughs>